And we're back. We're about to play um, Ubi Island 2 with Andrew Augustin from Notion Games. And we have him on the line. What is happening, Andrew? Do you hear me? Yes, you sound great. Oh go. my God. Okay. Live okay. shows. <laughs> Gotta love the live shows. They're freaking amazing. Yeah, like, so how's it going? It's been a minute. It's so awesome it's to see you, like, you've been doing so much stuff. Yeah, man, I've been busy teaching. I've been trying to get, um, I, I moved to Houston recently. Well, a couple of years ago, actually, to become a teacher to teach the industry to minorities. So, you know, I, I felt like there was a, a lack of diversity at one point. I'm trying to expose, you know, the youth to this industry. So that's why I've been at for a bit, but now I'm back full time on the games. Really? That's, that is so cool. I know that you were teaching before and you're doing so much. You do comic books, you do animation, um, you do games, you do comics, right? I'm not fronting on that, right? No, you're not. I mean, I, I touch on a bunch of everything, man. It's just that creative energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just want to create. So if it's games, if it's comics, if it's animation, if it's film, I just want to dabble in it. Yeah, no, I, I totally feel feel you on that. Could you talk a little bit about your studio and, and kind of how you came to get into game development? Well, um, so the first game I worked on was The Sims. And I've always kind of been like, independent minded when it came to you know when it comes to creating um so i had my shot in the industry uh back in 2011 uh being a character designer for the sims but as i was working there i was like you know what i want to learn how to make my own games so i just took the money that i had uh put that into a company llc started notion games started teaching myself how to code and ubi island was my first game well, Up Up Ubi was my first game. Ubi was like my first main character. And I decided to make him in a, put him in a Mario, Sonic, Donkey Kong style game uh, back in 2013 called Ubi Island. Super Ubi Island. And um, now I'm back touching up on Ubi Island 2. So it's kind of taking everything I learned from the first game because it, it was my first, you know, game doing it all solo, um, programming, doing the art, everything. So, um, I looked at the game a little harder. I figured I want to touch up on a let's put things. up the game. Like We're actually better. playing it. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't really get to see me, too many people play part two yet. So yeah, um, I wanted to stick with the hand drawn style. That's kind of my personal kind of taste. I like the uh, I like stuff from the '90s, like Dexter's Laboratory. I love the 2D Mario games. I love uh, Donkey Kong Country. All these things. So. I kind of been taking the inspirations for all those games back in the day. This is just like a big homage, kind of like taking all those games and putting them in one pot, mixing them together. So, really, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say I really like the flow. Like if you press, I think it's B where you can roll. So you have this like sonic feel. Then you could double jump and use the balloon to glide down. It has this like really speed runner style flow to it. It's it's really fun. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, I incorporated the role again that was kind of taking elements from Sonic. Um, so part two is a lot more Sonic influenced than the original. The original was more of a Mario influence. This one is adding a lot more Sonic elements to it. So I wanted to be able to give players the ability to be able to speed run. So I'm kind of designing the levels around. Uh, I put a new combo system. So if you um, land on a various amount of enemies, multiple enemies before you land uh, as, a, as a combo. Um, and it, I just want to be able to give players the tools to be able to speed run, add, build up a bunch of combos, get a bunch of points before, you know, exiting the level and stuff like that. So this one is definitely taking into mind the whole speed run genre. I couldn't get past that part. I'm like, how the heck, <laughs> how do you get down there, man? <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. So I gave him a bunch of new abilities. Like, um, I try to just give the character as many things as I can. He has, he can um, double jump, he can wall jump, he has a balloon, he can um, do like a slam. So if you jump and slam on that enemy, it'll allow him to go even higher. So the, the same way you kind of did the, uh, yeah, if you do that move right there when he comes up, it'll bounce you higher. Oh, okay. All right, so you have so to you press it once, it'll bounce, and then you can jump. He went ham real quick. I know it ham. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So how does it dip? Like, how was your experience with development? Because you started this like shortly after you started uh, Ubi Island One, right? Um, but then yeah. you kind of took you you went into teaching. You were doing some other creative things, and you're like now you're come really coming back to it. How has your experience changed? You know, from now, like, can it have evolved for you to now get back into this? Um, well, just working at different games in general. Like, I went to Australia for about two years working at a casino game company. Um, so a lot of experience that I picked up working there, I kind of try to bring over. Um, I started looking more at, um, basically, I wanted to give... Uh, so the first game, I felt, even though I, I liked the style and everything, I went with it, I felt like it was a little flat. You know, um, I was kind of learning how to do environments more, kind of have uh, the environments feel more uh, vast, if that makes sense. Yeah. So with this mini game, this is like a mini game um, room where you have to land on the platforms in numerical order. And that's how you, you got to figure out how to go from one to two to three to four and so forth. Um, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around as I'm watching them play. So, no, um, you, no, that's part of being a dev. You got to like, yo, this is how you play it. Yeah, so, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, man, like for, for two, I wanted the game to feel a lot more vast, like like he's in this big world. Um, I wanted to up the animations. Um, I want to basically... I want to carry over... So the first game, we had a lot of music, custom music, you know, original soundtrack. Soundtrack is really something I find very important in games. So Ubi Island 2 is going to have a very robust soundtrack. Um, we're looking at roughly 40 tracks for it. Um, and I just want to just kind of take a bunch of stuff from the 90s. Like Streets of Rage was really my influence for the soundtracks. So oh, like I nice. love... I love how Streets of Rage has a really good soundtrack, and that's one of the things I really remember about the franchise. So I wanted to kind of tie that into Ubi Island. So like I said, Ubi Island is a combination of everything that I like growing up in the 90s and in the games that I played. Um, it might not be... See, he's finding all kinds of... That's what I'm saying. He's finding yeah, all kinds of bugs that I didn't even know exist because... When I, was, <laughs> when I was trying it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it is, it's, it's definitely like one of the... It's, it's, it's a game that's supposed to be challenging. Um, and I'm trying to work on a difficulty curve to be, you know, you learn the moves as you go. And then um, go to the red door. I want to see you try to try to boss. So, and another big thing, he has the door at the top. At the top. Okay. So another one of the things that I wanted to do is um, basically bring in a lot of boss battles. So this kind of is where like the Mega Man influence comes in, the Sonic influence comes in. Um, I noticed Mario was, had bosses, but they weren't really uh, that challenging, in my opinion. So I kind of wanted to bring the uh, kind of challenge element of boss battles and stuff to Ubi Island. You got smashed up real quick. <laughs> I can't front, though. It's I know it's not. It's definitely not easy. No, it's not. Um, Get it? It's not. I mean, as a developer, you know, you play these things over and over and oh, it, yeah. it becomes second nature to you. So I'm, I'm still developing it. Um, and then I will be doing play testing and then tweaking the balance and then all these other things. But uh, I'm going to have to try. I want to try next right, now. Have you tried? <laughs> He's like, not right now. You got to try one more time. Um, right. So you do everything on the game. Do you do you do the composing art? Or, I don't no, do you have a composer, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a, a, a few people that I like to use. Um, we've been working with each other for years. Yeah, okay. Um, but I do all the animation, the character designs for the most part. I have my boy, uh, Edward Dennis, actually. He's helping me with the cutscenes. So this right there that he skipped, that was like cutscenes that work that he was doing. But I've done all the animation in the game, the programming, the design, etc. So um, this is the world map in the first game. His his whole see again he's finding bugs that I ain't even <laughs> so in the first game um, the goal for Ubiali was for him to um, rebuild a ship and make it off uh, Climate Island so this is starting off right after I think you might have to restart yeah okay. you restart because this is the area that's not even finished it was like a uh, okay it's like a save room thing that I haven't developed yet. So um, in the first game, though, 
he uh, crash lands on this planet, and he his goal is to, to uh, rebuild his ship. His goal is to rebuild his ship and then get off the island. Um, the second one carries right after the first game, and he's able to fly around his ship and actually use his ship in various levels and traverse the world with it. That's that's dope. So you before you um while you were working on the first one, you did a lot of you did a, the end you went the indie route with, you know, getting a publisher, doing self promotion. How has what kind of lessons have you learned that you could tell people um from that experience? Um it's really tough. Like making the game is one thing but then marketing it and promoting it that is a whole different beast like and trying to figure you know find funding um because all this has been made off of money that i've been doing by like doing graphic design or working jobs so you know finding money and things like that it can be really difficult and it can be really difficult to produce a game when you don't have the funds to do it especially if you don't have the funds to hire a team or anything like that so um but all that experience and 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 I'm still in that route. I mean, I did just sign a deal, uh, so I do have a publisher and I have funding now. And oh, um, awesome. for this game, yeah. So yeah, and pretty much the studio. So oh, um, that's future awesome. titles and everything. Congrats on that. So thanks, man. So it's gonna be. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I left, you know, teaching because now I'm um, gonna continue building the studio full time. Can so you, um, I, th I think that's like a really interesting point. Um, can you describe that process of getting funding for your studio? I mean, you don't have to disclose anything you can't, you know, talk about. But I, I think um, people want to know how do you how you make that something like that happen. Um, it's kind of one of those things where you. It, it was weird how it happened, to be honest with you. I, I it was it was because I started doing film. I started getting networks. Like I started networking with people in film. And I was asked to basically direct a small film in the summer. And uh, basically one of the people at the meeting was like, oh, you, you don't know who that is? It's Andrew Augustine, he makes games, this, that, and the other. And there was just happened to be investors at the table. And they looked at my content and they decided to uh, negotiate a deal with me. So that was kind of just happens. It just kind of happened that way, you know? So. Um, I know that's not that's not really helpful, but that's just kind of how it. But you, I will say <laughs> something though. You had to prepare. You you were prepared for that moment. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. it, success is opportunity meets, you know, b preparation, right? As they as they say. So like you were kind of grooming yourself and building and learning how to pitch to people during that that process. So that's very serendipitous in the first place. Yeah. I had, um, you know, because I've made games before and I have comics and I have, you know, so I had this, you know, amount of content that was already created and, and original IPs and stuff like that. And they looked at all that and was like, wow, you're really just missing the marketing. You're missing the marketing yeah. and the push. So um, they wanted to get behind. So I guess to them, they saw value and what everything that I've created, which is kind of which was kind of like, you know, um, it's kind of daunting because it does kind of, you know, you do kind of have to produce. I had to produce a bunch of different things to get to this point that makes sense. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to, you know, from an indie standpoint, you know, I don't know how other indies do it where they never actually, you know, develop their own title and they get funding. Um, but my route was constantly keep creating keep uh, developing some content, um, put out content, and then basically just had all my business stuff together. I had all my, um, you know, my company Bible, I already had all that ready. So if anybody asked me, I could pull out the document. They see all my characters, they see the projects that have been completed, they see the projects that are, are in development. Um, and even taking everything that I've, uh, taking all the publications, like any kind of um, media coverage of any kind, I've documented all those things. So it was kind of like a presentation to be able to show them like, hey, I'm serious about this. This is the content I've been creating. This is the kind of the, uh, you know, this is how, you know, my content is getting out there, at least in, in different, um, you know, because I've been appearing in Nintendo Magazine, you know, Forbes 30 to 30, uh, Wells Fargo did a feature. So I had all these different things 
that I was showing them and that pretty much to them was like, okay, it was a big opportunity to kind of team up with him and really try to bring this company to a higher level, you know? Yeah, so you had like, that's, I remember I met you through Shauna, uh, yeah. Nils, and it's another kind of serendipitous moment because then we've connected over the years when you got your first publishing deal and we were talking about like I was talking about my experience <laughs> with publishers and it was like very it was hilarious but it was like also very educational so. yeah um it's been a while since I've seen her too really talented artist man uh yeah she she's uh killing it. yeah um but yeah you know uh it's it, it is a uh, it's a journey, man. It's definitely it has been a journey. I've been at this for almost literally a decade, you know. So it it took a lot of late nights, <laughs> uh, uncertainty, uh, learning different skills. Like not only did I have to learn how to draw, but then I had to learn how to create assets for video games, which is different than just learning how to draw in itself. If that makes sense. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you know, you're a developer. You know, you, you work on projects and stuff. So it's like. Then you got to worry about uh, programming. Then you got to learn about uh, user experience and how they interact with the title and all these different things. And it was just like, I don't know. It, it, it's crazy that uh, I continue to do this because this is not an easy industry whatsoever. Um, but I guess, you you know, having the passion to create is, is a big driver and kind of really helps, uh, you know, hopefully anybody get into a point where they can land a deal and get opportunities and be able to, you know, bring their projects to fruition. Yeah. Um, I, what What would you say to upcoming developers to motivate them to to uh, become successful in the industry? Uh, it, my biggest thing, like dealing with my students, you know, I kind of have to gauge what, what are their aspirations, right? Do they want to be indie? Do they want to make their own content? Do they want to join teams? Do they want to work at a big developer? Like, you know, uh, do they want to work at EA or something like that, right? Um, and then I would just tell them, so if you want to be indie, you have to be willing to wear as many hats as possible. You have to be willing to uh, pick up a pencil if you don't know how to draw, because you might have to be the one doing the art if you don't have the funding to be able to, you know, um, hire an artist. You might have to uh, learn how to do a little bit of marketing. Get on, like getting on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anything you can. You have to kind of utilize all that um, if you want to be an indie. As far as getting industry on on a um, working at a company, take one skill and try to be as best as you can at that skill. So if you want to be a concept artist or animator, animate, animate, animate. And get as good as you possibly can. So it's kind of different approaches, depending on where you're trying to go. So I know in the industry, I was looked at as like a jack of all trades, which is kind of what they seem to not like as much yeah. as somebody who's extremely talented in one area, if that makes sense. So, but in the world, it's a little different. You, It is kind of a good thing to be a jack of all trades because you get a lot of things done and you get to save a lot of money here and there. And, you know, you can get <laughs> yeah. this concept, you know? Also, I, I think a jack of all trades, at least from my standpoint, is you get to understand what engineers do, right? So then you're yeah. able to communicate with them better or what animators do or designers or project managers because you have to like dabble in all of it. So you have an understanding in a different like lexicon and language that you can com use to communicate with other people and that you end up becoming like, you know, a director or a producer with a good eye. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You do, it, it, there's a lot of benefit to it. Um, there's, there's a ton of benefit to actually learning the ropes on a lot of different areas, in a lot of different areas, you know? Um, Cause like you said, you get to con communicate um, and basically be able to direct a team if you need to. And at any level, you probably will need to. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sorry, that boss is like- <laughs> I'm gonna try one and, and uh, Alfonso here is going to ask a couple questions. That's right. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. What's up, so Alfonso? you switched from teaching to running your own studio. How was that transition for you? Well, I was running my own studio first, and then I went to teaching, and then I'm back. But the transition has been pretty smooth. I mean, the one thing I would say um, 
is that while I was teaching, I've kind of been missing being in the industry and working um, because, you know, teaching is a full time job. So I'm teaching what teaching other people to do what I want to do currently. So, you know, I kind of had that 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 burning desire to kind of go back and um, create. But I also felt like it was important to, you know, try to educate as I'm progressing through my career. But um, but yeah, coming back now, I don't have you know, I mean, now that I have a deal, I have a um, safety net, per se, but like transitioning from indie to working, it gave me at least a, a um, stable income. Yes. Yeah. And and is there an opportunity for like the students you're teaching to help to work with you in, in some in some of your projects? Are you, is, are you using that as a way to sort of educate them on the industry? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have a program coming up where I will be basically funneling because one of the issues that I found as being a teacher is a lot of students who have a passion to create can't really afford college, right? Um, especially like our schools these days are really expensive. So a lot of them leave and they kind of just stop creating. So um, I'm starting something where I will serve kind of like as a bridge to the industry, you know, um, getting them actual projects because i've been i've been um having connections with sesame street nickelodeon uh martellus bennett and the imagination agency so i have all these connections now and i will basically be allowing them to network with those people and also work on actual industry projects uh in, in some capacity to help the res build their resume and also help basically you know um help basically get them connected in the industry without actually having to go the college route if they're not able to. Correct. That's dope. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, where can we find out more about you? Where can the folks find out more about you and the, and the game? Uh, notiongames.com. Uh, I will be doing an overhaul of a bunch of stuff now that I'm back. I'm literally like just left the high school graduation this morning. So, um, I'll be doing a whole bunch of restructuring and uh, getting everything going, getting back into development on Ubi 2. Uh, so, but yeah, you guys can find me on that or on Instagram at Nintendrew, N I N, the number 10, and Drew, D R E W. Yeah, make sure to wishlist the game and buy your previous game, of course, Ubi Island 1. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll be releasing that on console soon. So, we're going to be, it's going to be a whole different wave this time now that I got support. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you guys for having me. All right, man. Have a good one. All right. It's super cool to get like be able to to talk to him. He's teaching. He's been around the world. He's an animator. He's working with animation studios, uh, and then also getting the game early. You know. Yeah. And he's like giving back to the community. Like that's a lot of people just try and get theirs without sort of like giving back. But he's been doing that along the way, and that's that's really important. Yeah, for sure.